up about 19 percent this week, on track for its best week since August of 2020. For more on what's driving the move, let's bring in Bill Perkins, CEO and head trader at Skylar Capital Management. Bill, welcome. Good to have you with us. Uh, explain the move today in that gas. What's behind it? Well, it's the weather. Uh, Mother Nature is the uh, biggest fundamental. And, you know, over the last five years, we've kind of had this energy policy where we're going to jump out the plane without our parachute and put it on in the air, which means we have a lot of renewables um, and a lot of intermittent infrastructure that that is basically making the grid less stable and um, less reliable with cold shocks. So... <laughs> As In other words, the reliance, the reliance on, let's call it, new energy technology is just not as, I guess I would say, elastic and able to respond as well as the old energy technology? I just want you to elaborate. Yeah, cor correct. Yeah. So we've had basically uh, uh, a three BCF a day tightening of supply and demand. And that's exacerbated in the winter. And we're not going to solar our way out of uh, heating demand in the winter. And, you know, we've had pipelines uh, uh, stopped from being permitted. We haven't really put in new infrastructure as our economy has grown, as our population has grown. Mm -hmm. And so when we have these shocks to the system, we have to solve that with price. And the price is moving in much more dramatic fashion. Um, and if this continues in, in the later years, we're going to see the system break. Uh, but right now, I don't think the system is going to break. I think the market is behaving rationally. Uh, we don't want to see a repeat of what happened last year in Texas and prices going completely parabolic. So traders are being very conservative, conservative and prices are rallying. I often think of the Northeast, too, Bill, which is one of the areas of most concern because it doesn't have a lot of pipelines, despite being right near the Pennsylvania shale for nat gas. And they're reliant on LNG shipments. And there's a whole issue with where those are coming from, including from Russia. So they're paying a lot higher prices already. And now they have a storm bearing down. So are there any geopolitical factors in this as well? Well, the geopolitical factor is, is that we export about 12 to 13 BCF a day to the world, namely Europe. And prices over there are about six times higher than what they are here in the United States of America. So in order to economically shut that down to keep the gas here, that's a long ways up. And so that creates a, 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 a basically a step function change in price in order to get the supply you need. Or we're going to have to destroy a lot of demand, which, you know, people have just gone through COVID. They don't want any more demand destruction, right? They want to live. They want to have fun. Yeah. They want to heat their homes. Heating oil is up as well. Where do you see um, oil uh, going over the next year, say? Regular petroleum. I know that's not your, your, your native area, but... I it's not my forte, that. but it's it's the same story and it's the same theme. We have policies that are discouraging investment in fossil fuels, particularly oil uh, and also natural gas. And we're, we're eventually going to this area where we're a renewable economy. But the road isn't well planned out. It's kind of hodgepodge. And we are still very dependent on oil and natural gas for our livelihoods, right. for our lives. We, nobody wants to freeze to death in the winter. And people, we're in a global economy where there's more and more people each year driving and, and need oil. And um, the infrastructure hasn't been put in. Um, and so it's a very tight market. I see it getting tighter and tighter. And um, I don't know what the solution is, except for uh, more investment into infrastructure and a more harmonized policy that is smoother than this herky-jerky way to the renewable future.